finally my turn. Uh, like she said, I am the one of the, not digital marketing directors, but the overall marketing strategist for Universal Music Group. I uh, predominantly work with the artists per se, uh, the talent, as far as getting the talent to the, you know, the digital world. So what I was talking about was digital natives and digital immigrants. And being with that said, being that you, trying to figure out what a digital native feels, a digital native is a person that was pretty much born into the digital world. You know, your smartphones, your, your digital apps, your, your, your up-to-date uh, gaming systems and things of that nature. And one of the things that we do at Universal Music Group with digital natives is, like I said, it's talent for specifically. Talent is one of our um, most, um, I call it, expensive things. It's like an employee for her job. So what we, what we found out is, you know, through finding out, through all these digital outlets that these, you know, all the young people like myself use, which helps out a lot with me working in that field, is because I get to know that I want instant access to things and quicker access, and I can multitask to get to those things. So when, when we're dealing with artists and knowing that the labels have folded, we, have, we started off with five major labels and ended up with three left. And being that, with that, um, a lot of the, the foldback went to you know, being traditional. And I always say traditional things in a non-traditional world just creates corruption to business, period. And that's one of the biggest things with digital natives that we found out that, okay, well, since we lost so much money with these major companies, with these major labels, I mean, and we had two of, two of the biggest ones, you know, shut down besides Universal, you know, saying that Universal, you know, controls most of the market share with the music industry and entertainment industry, period. Um, one of the major things that we focus on now is instant sales, instant gratification, and we mostly find that to be predominantly with the digital natives. Um, now, another thing with the digital natives, they do, not, they do not do like digital immigrants, which I will get to later, is they don't look into details, they don't care about details, they're impulse people, impulse consumers. So with that being said, when we market towards them and, and target them, all right, we, we know that most people 18 to, to, well, even 14 to 30, are mostly digital immigrants and are digital natives. And then above that, you know, most majority of them are digital immigrants where they are not born into the digital world and they have a hard time trying to adjust to it where, you know, um, they, they try to adopt the way digital natives do things, but they're still stuck in their ways. And I can say, I'm gonna say 40 and older, usually sometimes, are most of the time, digital immigrants to me. Where, where we found out where they're not really used to, they, they have smartphones, but they don't know how to use them. They, don't know, they do not know how to multitask. You know, uh, with that being said, we find, we find ourselves losing a lot of money because we can't physically distribute like we want to because we don't make a lot of money in physical format, especially in the U.S. We don't. Um, being that, when, when, with that being the key, we're trying to implement new ways for digital immigrants to adopt easier to digital natives, you know, habits. And being that that's one of our focus points and not really our primary focus point, but it's a focus point because the thing is, we don't want to exclude anyone from, you know, purchasing and buying things from, you know, and then, you know, exploiting our business as well. So we, we started to buy up a lot of companies in the music industry, entertainment business, to help us with that, you know, kind of help fold the, the, the digital natives and the digital immigrants into one pie, which is pretty hard to do when digital natives are stuck in a way. So we have to 
break it down by details on demographics to cities, locations, even to religion, to things of that nature. Because what happens, we found out people with certain religions don't do certain things because of tradition. So we can't stick to that method because we then lose a lot of time and a lot of money into that. So what, what we do with digital immigrants now is we, we try to um, offer different, um, we call, we try to get them to, if they are already online, we try to get them to get influenced by the younger people that's around them. And a lot of like, like now, nowadays, we got a lot of older people wanting to stay young, you know? <laughs> and and when, when we see that, we like, you know, oh, the old people don't want the gray hair no more. They don't, want the, they don't want all the bushy hair. They don't want that. They want to look like they're 25 when they're 50, you know? So they try to adopt to the, you know, the digital natives way of thinking and, you know, the way they look at things and how they, they, how they buy things and things of that nature. Um, it's almost like trying to duplicate uh, a natural person with a, a natural talent. You, if a person don't really know how to do it, it's going to be difficult. And when something is difficult, it, they, people give up when difficult things come their way. Right. You got a question? Well, that's a good question. And the best answer for that is, well, I have an a auntie that's 47 years old. And one of the things is, she, she's influenced by the, the she, 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 she's a photo person. So she likes photos, right? So what she do is she watch young girls and see what young girls do. And she, she, she try to duplicate that. And she's not in the best shape. She's not, she, 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 but the overall, it's, you, you got the younger people maturing quicker than the older people, the older people getting to the younger people, because the phase is people like attention, and women like attention a lot, right? So um, when, when it comes to us trying to manipulate the market, because all marketing is, is manipulating. So you can influence anyone to do anything, right? Because all you need is, is, is a few, uh, I call it a few details of what a person want from whether it's general surveys or seeing what, what people like or what people like, what people, families like to do on a daily basis. You go to, you go inside people's home and you figure out what, what do the mother like, what does the father like, what's the, and how do, because like I said, I work with artists and I work with artists from 17 years on up all the way up to 25 in Universal Music Group. And a lot of times, and we're, we're not in an age where people have 80-year-old grandmas like that anymore. Everybody's grandma is 40 and 35 and 40 and 44. So it, it's not like you're really dealing with older people. They're not so much of digital immigrants. They're more um, traditional thinkers. So what they do is they try to relate to their kids. So what happens is when they try to relate to their kids, they try to do what their kids do, where it's carry iPhones, is it it's iPads, is it whether it's... Uh, going to clubs or whatever, whatever it takes to fit in. And because when I was a kid, I used to play in ditches. And I used to dig in water and stuff like that. Kids don't do that. But then as kids change the way they operate, adults change the way they operate. So when we find that to be the essence, what we do is we try to figure out, okay, how do we take an older adult and make them become, I guess, ha like adopting to the digital natives world. Well, it's easy. We get, what we find it easy to do is we found it, everybody loves music. Music can touch you in several ways, sad, mad, hangry, whatever. Music is one of the most influential things besides TV. So with that being said, if, if, if majority of the music is out there exploiting you know, whether it's sex, whether it's whatever is exploiting. And, it, and it's touching the majority. And, 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 and those are the people that are living or look like they're living life or, and that, that's again, go back to manipulating the market. Looks like they're living a life that's, you know, it's lifestyle marketing, period. So everybody wants to be part of certain, a certain lifestyle, whether they're old or not. You know, nobody wants to be old. I mean, unfortunately, nobody wants to be, if somebody's 60, they don't want to be 60, you know. 
it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's the trials that come with being 60. So when it comes to the music industry, entertainment wise, you have a big variety of influential people in the entertainment industry that are young, and you have a lot that are old. As you know, the entertainment business, what we do is we use older people like Vivica Fox, um, you know, uh, uh, Kelly, we, we keep all these, Kelly Price, all these people, we keep them looking young and we sell them in a young way. You see what I'm saying? So what happens to people at home when they're younger? Everybody, everybody is not digital immigrants to the extent where they're just stuck in their ways. No, some people want to say, "Hey, I want to be like I want to be like my daughter. She out there having fun. She she out there, you know. She she's still getting, you know. I I, I think I can still get a man too, you know. Maybe I got to listen to this music. Maybe I got to do this, you know. And, and so that drives them into doing digital native things, you know. Um, and the old people, I don't consider them old really because in their mind they feel like they're 20, you know. And, and, a, and a lot of times, I mean, he, he's a good example, but um, we all know that, but as a digital native, I know you're not a digital immigrant. I know you're going to have a hard time multitasking. I know you're going to have a hard time uh, gathering multiple resources and, and trying to use all those resources at one time. With a digital native, I know that you are multitasking. You're looking for multiple sources to find things, multiple sources to go to to get things. Everybody, and what the, one, one of the biggest things we always talk about, we're in a business where it's not traditional. It's not the 90s. Nobody really cares about, you know, so much how a person look. They just care about the appeal of what a person have, image, materialistic things. So what we learn in, in, in a digital in a digital native world is everything is about house, cars, money, um, uh, drugs, sex, things of that nature. So it, older people are already introduced to a lot of those those things that that we try to manipulate people with with in the younger market. And I mean, I don't like using the word manipulate, but it is what it is. With what we do, we 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 sell a product that's not. Pretty much, we sell something before it's sold, basically. You present something in a package, and you sell it, and you, you get people to bite it. And if we find people bite things more from mobile devices, online, whether they got to find songs and things of that nature, they want quicker access to those, that, that, those the, whatever access they get, they want quicker access to get it. That's why iTunes be, did what Google Play did. You know, they became a quicker access. They made iTunes music. Instead of you having to download this, go do this, and not able to access music as quick. They figure all these companies have diverted to, you know, going to getting in instant music. Let us do that. So if iTunes had that in the beginning, iTunes is already big, but it would have been even bigger. But they came after the fact. The fact that when they seen that Universal Music Group was going to put more money into Spotify because people could actually quickly access music and buy music there. We're going to go and support whatever supporting us, you know, as far as on an economic basis and on a, on a wide masses basis. So in a, in a sense, what we did was we tried to took, we took digital immigrants that wanted to do the same thing. We gave them a, a, another access. We gave them something that they can access without having to go through a lot of hassle to get into it. You know, so now they can go to iTunes Music and just go to the music they want and get it without having to read through everything, having to go through everything. Because, as we know, old people are sequential thinkers. Younger people are not. They don't think like that. They don't think, primarily, they don't think at all. If it's in post, they get it. They go after it. And that's what we go after. At this moment, we can't afford to, to put out things for digital immigrants because we don't have the time to wait on the investment, the, re, the return of investment. We don't have the time to wait on it. We don't have, it, it's, 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 it, we will lose more than we would gain from it because there's a million digital immigrants out there, but out of those million digital immigrants, we put something out there, physical to them, it's gonna take them a while to get it, which we have other, we have other things where we have to, when you do an investment, there's a time period you want your money back, you want to get, all your economic value back from it, plus whatever interest comes with it. And we felt that we were losing a lot. We lost, I mean, even though we're a billion dollar corporation, we, we've lost billions of dollars too. And we lost billions of dollars because we, 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 we stuck to a digital immigrant tradition and we could no longer do that no more. 
So, you know, um, how we're managing these elements internally, we're going into a, we're stepping into a new generation thing where we call live stream broadcasting with, with our talent, right? We, we, get, we, get, we get all these apps like Periscope, uh, hang with all these apps that people can really interact with talent that's connected to us. And not only do we, we don't have anybody monitoring these sites for them, like it would be normally traditional. We don't have anybody, no managers, no nobody coming saying, hey, we're going we're gonna to monitor you and see what you're doing. No, no, no. We let the artists do what they want to do. We don't have any sensors on it. We don't tell them, you know, you're not allowed to do this. No, you do what you want to do. We're in a, a non-traditional market, for one. Nobody is going to criticize you as much but digital immigrants. But digital natives is not going to criticize you. They don't think sequentially anyways. So all they're going to do is say, hey, I relate, I, want, I relate to this or I want to relate to this. And this is one of my favorite idols. This is one of my favorite artists. Not only are just favorite artists, but we do these apps where they can, they don't just, per, they don't just per se do their music. You, you see their life in and out from in-house, outside, on a plane, on a beach, and they can talk to you, you can talk back to them, and they can more, it, it makes it more interactive. And ever since these apps have been out for the last two years, we have seen digital sales grow enormously, publishing grew enormously. Um, one thing about it is we don't primarily focus on the U.S. The reason why is because the only way, the, just now we started focusing on the U.S. when it came to the uh, Spotify world and the um, uh, iTunes. Because old, old people sim somehow are buying albums still, but you have like 10% of them that really count to our financial market. So when you got 90% still left and they're all trying to get digital, we got to figure out, okay, so should we just fade away with albums and things of that nature and just totally go towards the digital side of the world? We said, yeah, because right now, if we, we're, if we had 74% on, on a digital side in the U.S. and, and, and then a, a small double digit in the, in, in, in the U.S. with physical, we go to the digital. So with that, ha with that being said, we kind of diverged over from not just mobile phones and, 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 and iPads, but we also have ways with the internet that we are doing things. We even uh, are trying you know, to partner up with like places like Google and stuff like that, um, where we have all the digital, the digital ways of, like they have a, we're trying to do this little digital ball thing where a box where you, you control the music and it's, and it's connected inside this box, but it's a digital box, and you can twist the box around and press play, and then you go around and put it on a playlist. It's just, it's more one of those things, it's just becoming a phase, and, and it's being researched at this moment. And that's one of the things we're doing. We're trying to make sure that we reach as many digital natives as possible. And I tell people like this, if you're a digital immigrant, it's either, in anything, it's either you catch up or you get left behind. You know, if you don't know how to use a computer, if you don't know how to use a smartphone, if you don't know how to multitask, I don't think the future is, is going to be good for you, you know, especially when it comes, in, from what I know internally with the Universal Music Group, you know, we're not going to go, at, we're not going to go to traditional marketing anymore, especially when it comes to a new generation of digital natives. We're, we're, we're slowly leaving the physical form, and overseas we do good physically sometimes. In most places, Sweden, Japan, China, of course, we do good those places. Because those people really, really, they are already digital natives there. They're, 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 really, they're really already, to, to me, ahead of things. Here, they're not ahead. So that's why we have lesser sales here. Because they're not, they're not, they're just now coming to play. And, and, and the thing is, when it comes to Universal Music Group, we're trying to figure ways, lesser ways to spend a lot of money and more ways to make a lot of money. And with that being said, we, um, we, try to get, we try to get with people that have parallel thinking. And apparently, digital natives have parallel thinking. And digital immigrants think like old people. They're stuck in their ways. And they only believe in one way. They only believe in, you, this is the only way I'm going to do it, and there's no other way. 
I'm, I'm going to buy this. There's no other way I'm going to look at this. Okay. So what we do is we influence the, the digital natives to influence the digital immigrants by, if it's, you know, giving them, you know, an iPad. I mean, everybody has access to iPads or uh, the digital notebooks and things of that nature. Um, we find it that in, in multimedia and, and multi-resources, older people are trying to connect with that as well right now. You know, um, texting, which is, it's, it's, you know, really not good for old people because it takes forever to respond back. Uh, you have your text an old person and, and, and you text them, how are you doing? And, and it takes them forever to say, I'm doing good, you know. And the whole time they were sitting there trying to text, believe it or not. And they was looking at the numbers and looking at the phone. So timing is everything too. So we base things off of fast paced sales. That's why we went to digital, because you can get you can get iTunes sales like this. They come in back to back. So would you say that most of your revenue either comes from like instant gratification of direct downloads from iTunes and places like that? Or the like Spotify where you pay for the membership and then you get like a, I don't know how it works. Well at this moment Spotify is one of our greater um, uh, iTunes is always going to be the biggest, being that it's iTunes and everybody has an iPhone. And the thing is, iPhone only sets it up where you only you only can really benefit from getting music. It's only if you use their you know their software. But um, Spotify, the reason Spotify is is growing massively is because they already had certain things that iTunes didn't have you know, where they didn't have instant access to music, where Spotify did. And so that made Spotify stronger in that aspect. Now, as far as long term, iTunes is going to win, but Sp Spotify is, is stronger because most of our sales are coming from Spotify every time. So are you not marketing to your Android users? Do you market to your iPhone users? No, The reason why, we found that 65% of our, our, our use, or 65% of our, our sales come from iPhones, Apple products. Android, you know, it's, it's 40, you know, you know, 35. So where, where Android, people use it because it, 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 you can download music and you can have it on your phone and you don't have to worry about rebuying it or, you know, doing that. But the thing is, here's the thing. You, you got to think about, it's, it's the consequences that iPhone has, or with Android has, that makes iPhone stronger. Because you don't have to worry about catching viruses on iPhones. You don't have to worry about all the ads and things of that nature on iPhones as you would on Android. So apparently, Android is not going to be a stronger market to target as far as getting digital sales because most people can download it for free. iPhone, you can't download it for free. You have to pay for it if you want it. So you're going to get most of your sales if 65% of your people have iPhones, and the only way they can get the music is by buying it. Android, you can get it for free. You can go to a website and just go to Google and they download this song, and it's going to let you download it free. You don't have to pay for it. That's a big chunk of, that's a big loss in, in everything. You know, if we had, if Android and Google and, 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 and iPhones was, was the same, we wouldn't worry about that because we have, a, we have a great amount of sales digitally. But Android doesn't have a, a stronghold on that. So we have to find ways to diffuse that matter by trying to do a lot of more deals with our, you know, Apple. So of course, the thing goes, Android is not as big as Apple as, as, as like it used to be. You know, um, they, they, do come, they do have a lot of um, ways of trying to get, you know, trying to become, you know, similar to each other. And Apple is slowly trying to transition over into how Android do things, you know, by trying to get, trying to own more of the software and things of that nature and having an easier access for people to get music, but they don't want it where people can get it for free because then they lose a lot of their momentum that way. And so when we know that. Hey, Alder. Yes, sir. How are you? I read recently that Taylor Swift's manager thought Spotify would be out of business in a few years. What do you think about that? And Tidal and streaming music at large. You say the question one more time. So Taylor Swift's manager 
recently commented in an interview that he thinks streaming music will be out of business in a few years. So it's interesting to hear from you, your thoughts on that, and what you think might replace that. Streaming music might be out of business. Um, the, only, the only way I would see that happening is if, like, what could be created to remove streaming music? Like, what would, what would remove iTunes? What would remove Amazon? What would remove Spotify? There's pretty much, at this moment, I, I couldn't see that within the next 10 years, I couldn't see that happening. Uh, being that more deals are being developed with these companies, more partnerships are being developed with these companies, more stores, more individual streaming stores are being par partnered up with these companies. One store might own 50, one store might own 2,000. So each one of these digital stores have multiple stores that are sub, you know, subsidiary stores of one store. So I don't think that would happen. Now, if, if, if you're speaking based on piracy and, and not piracy, but uh, getting free music and free downloads and stuff like that, that can't really, it, it, that's been trying to be, that's been in the work of being controlled for the longest, but I don't think that really can be controlled. I don't think you'll be, never be able to stop free music. Um, just because in the fact that there is no site that can stop you from getting free music. Now, like YouTube is doing something different. They're getting ready to start, you know, because like I said, you know, we own a percentage of YouTube, uh, of Vivo, really. Um, and Vivo and YouTube is partnered up, you know. So what we do, it, what, what's going on with YouTube is they're getting ready to do a new platform called Music Key. And, well, we lost a lot of revenue with YouTube, right? Because we got people that create, like we got regular average Joe people that creates videos. And what they do is they go get a, 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 a artist that's signed to one of our labels or one of our mother's sister labels and they put, they, they put the artist's music on there and they get play. But we, can't, we, we couldn't receive publishing and royalties and things of that nature from it because it wasn't put up by us. It was put up by, you know, an average Joe. And what happened was the, the system BMI and all these performance rights organizations couldn't pull anything from it. So now YouTube is doing it where if people have that already done, they're going to, for one, they're going to go back and, 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 and retrieve royalties from it and then remove it from that particular person's uh, video instantly. Uh, just because that has lost a lot of revenue. When you look at it over a five-year period, we lost over $20 million, and, 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 and that's major to us, especially when it comes to publishing, because publishing is where we get most of our revenue from in advertising. So at, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, um, when, you, when, when, when you're talking about streaming and, and streaming going out of the way, I don't think streaming is going to go out of the way. I think it's only going to get better as it goes on, so. So, so I'm, I'm curious along those lines, and you had mentioned that people download this, or, or pirate this music, right, from, from, on Android phones more, and I think it's, the, the data is pretty evident that obviously yeah, Apple, people that use Apple have spent higher uh, throughout the App Store and on all their apps, but isn't the, I mean, I would imagine that the, you know, that the, the streaming music, especially Spotify and these other things, are are much more pre prevalent than the people that actually pirate anything on the Android device. And the the real challenge is just how do you better monetize uh, the users on Android? And when you look at it pr from a percentage basis, of course, Apple's going to be higher because it's a premium-based product, and you have predominantly uh, uh, people that have less income buying buying Android. If you're looking at the developing world. So I guess my question, I apologize, is, is you know, it, it sounds like you think that Android actually doesn't have a, a chance to succeed and Spotify and these other things versus Apple Music, but is, is that just because of the piracy issue or is it because of the actual kind of iTunes actually having dominance versus the, these other kind of players? Well, of course, there's a little bit of all of it. The reason I say that is because piracy causes a lot of commotion within the music industry. Um, and being that Android is very accessible to piracy and it's very easy to, to, to get free music without um, having to uh, pay for it, it, it causes a big issue. I, it, I don't think it's going to affect... 
you get free music on Spotify, but 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 you pay in the ads, but you also can. Um, what here's the thing, when you got Spotify. Spotify, you 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 get paid for streaming, right? You know that, right? When when artists somebody listen to an artist's music on iTunes, it's not much, but if they look, if they the, the whole point of streaming is to stream and to purchase. So if you stream, you don't like, and you you you, you don't like the music, you don't purchase it. But the artist gets some type of residuals from that, being that you you played it. Now when you are doing piracy, you don't stream anything. You just go and download it, right? Um, and another another thing goes. Android doesn't have more control over their their, their product like Apple do. Apple has way more control, and they have. And it's if you run a company, you always want control. You want control for the purpose to uh, to be able to monopolize and to control the the, the industry, and th that's what they're doing. They're controlling the digital era with music. Um, I don't think it will run out anytime soon, being that even though Android is, is, is more freelancing than iTunes, where you can, anybody can, can do anything with it, it's not exclusive. So when something is not exclusive, it, 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 it ends up not lasting long anyways. You know, um, success lasts longer when you're exclusive. People buy more into you when you're exclusive. When, you, when you're, when you're non-exclusive, people don't do that. You, you're going to get all the people that, that really to me, to what I say, not not don't count, but don't really matter to the situation. You know, um, you when you when you're thinking about it, you know, um, companies that make millions of billions and billions of dollars and they have a high margin, it really doesn't matter about margin at the time at the time because they have a, a, a consumer base that that they might have 20 people buying millions of uh, products where a company has a low margin rate, but they're not. They don't have that many, they have thousands of consumers, but the amount of product they buy doesn't amount to the company that might have a hard margin rate, but makes way more money within product. So when it comes to Android, Android will, will, will surpass when it comes to the freelance and, the, and, the, and the, e the, the easiness of using, but then overall, what's going to last long term? iTunes sales, because even though they control their market, they're still going to, they're still going to, like you said, they're still going to monetize but from that, because of the exclusivity that they have, and, and as long as they keep advancing iPhones and things of that nature, it's, it, it's not going to go anywhere. I mean, maybe in the near future, but not nowhere now. Clear. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you.